I would hate you so much. I'm going to I'm going to be watching those Gatorade bottles like all those recording. I swear to you. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, everybody, or morning or afternoon. Whenever you're listening to this, we're recording it live or recording it tonight after the game. It's been an exciting one here to join me, of course, as I am the co-host, Jacob Young, joined by Ed Sinachoa, another co-host or the host of the show. How you doing? Well, I'm still I'm still feeling drenched from the um Gatorade bath that um, I was given after the game, but that's what happens when you've got a curse associated with you. And but honestly, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty happy. I I don't think I've ever been this happy since that playoff game against Phoenix Rising. Um, historic. It's a historic night for the first time in club history. The Toros have made the playoffs back to back. They, this time, we've qualified fifth, as far as I'm concerned. Based on I know Las Vegas, as of this recording, is still playing. But the game had the game had barely started. Maybe we were like what 20 minutes into the match, and it was already official that the Toros were going to clinch the playoffs, and. Just the fact that the team didn't conform themselves to just clinching the playoffs, but try to fight for that fifth spot in the Western Conference by acquiring a 4-1 final score against Monterey Bay FC. That's, that's just incredible, you know, how we got this far. Yeah, exactly. It's absolutely insane of how far we went. And I said it coming into year. I said it on Thursday. I kept saying it tonight. I'm like, I don't care. A win is the only exception tonight, no matter what. I we can't care about anything else that happens, any game going on. Yes, the Las Vegas Lights game is still going on right now. But as it stands, RGVFC finished in a sixth place due to New Mexico United winning. And that was of course just big they came out with something to prove saying hey we're not going to be taken lightly even though this is a team that monterey bay is a team that can destroy destroy teams they were super hot late in the season even though they missed the playoffs it was one of those situations where i came in here super nervous but i was saying a win no matter what that's the only exception here at home especially in front of the fans in this last home game that we're going to have. I don't, it had been a while since I had seen an attendance as great, as involved, as passionate that we saw tonight. And I have to give credit to the RGBFC front office. You know, I had my doubts early, early in the season about what direction they were going to take. They pretty much started off on the wrong foot with that situation with the Jersey reveal. And I think the results show that there has been some improvements in, in, in getting people into the stadium. You know, I took some videos before you drenched me with freaking Gatorade. I, oh no, you didn't. That was that was all. That was all someone else. That was all someone else. I won't say his name, but yes. Um, but the atmosphere as the players were walking back to the locker rooms after the game. You know, all these players. You know, yelling the players' names. Uh, asking them for their autographs, knowing who each of them were. In previous years, I don't know if you remember, Jacob, you probably do. That was one of the issues, you know. A former player, you know, would tell us off the record that, look, I can go anywhere I want if nobody recognizes me. Like, the, the, just the, that, that, that relationship between players and fans just wasn't there. And now with the uh, independence from the Houston Dynamo, it's starting to build up, and I and, and you just gotta love to see that. Um, but going back, going back to the to the game as well, you know, Monterey Bay. Yes, they were troubled with every, everything that was happening off the pitch, uh, 
and related to the uh, the suspension that was overturned uh, because of that issue between Monterey Bay and the, the Tampa Bay Rowdies. You know, Wilmer Cabrera did mention we try to make them feel as welcome as possible because that's the Valley way, you know, and, and all of that. But at the end of the day, you know, on the pitch, you know, you I don't want to say that you forget that, but it's like at the end of the of the day, when you're on the pitch and the and the and the referee blows that whistle, they're your opponents. You're gonna try and beat them as best as best as you can, and that yeah, and that's and that's exactly what they did. Now, I think the what really caught me off guard in this ending of the season it was the question I asked Wilmer Cabrera, and that was I asked him, "Look, Wilmer, a couple of months ago." The situation looked bleak for the Toros. The team was in last place. It seemed like there was nothing they could do went right. Um, and yet you mentioned three, four games. Winning three, four games in a row is gonna take is gonna put us back in, in, in a in a spot. And I frankly did not believe did not believe them. It just sounded so out of out of whack with how the team was playing, how the team was performing. Hey, and look at them now, you know, qualified sixth with a possibility of qualifying fifth, despite all those struggles mid-season. And the fact that the, not, the players also bought into this mentality. You know, Gringo mentioned that he always said, like, we're going to be playing these games as a final. And look, we're, we're back in the playoffs. It's amazing. That's the crazy part, too. You brought it up. How how the players bought into it. Because, again, I will bring it up. When Coach Wilmer Cabrera coached Houston Dynamo, what happened his second year? He started to lose the locker room. Players started to buy out of what he was preaching to them. I'm, po I'm more than positive about that because later on we figured out other players from Houston Dynamo did that. But the second year, when we were at our bottom, when RGVFC were at their bottom, all of a sudden, these players are like, oh yeah, we can play soccer. We got this missing puzzle piece now. Nil-nil at home against the one of the worst teams in the Eastern Conference. And this team goes on a tear on the road in their rodeo, rodeo road trip. And the, these... And then, of course, it started to make us buy into this. But before that, we were saying, no way this team's making playoffs in August. And it, it's so true of how it all starts with the players have to buy in. The family of this team has to buy in. If not, kiss anything going forward goodbye. And that, that is true. And that says so much about Wilmer Cabrera back when, you know, you and I, two years before he was, and a year before he was head coach for RGVSC, we're thinking, this is the worst choice as a head coach of him coming back. And look at this. We're heading back to the playoffs for the first time ever for back-to-back. -back. Okay. That's it's just, it blows my mind how, how much he has been able to turn this around and being sporting director. We've hated on him for that. And yes, we want those players sooner rather than later. But I guess later in the end works too, as long as they perform right out. And don't make it a habit either. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Exactly. I'd rather them be mid-table, meaning about sixth place around in the final month of play. Because when you win a lot of those games and you're in sixth place, you are still controlling your own destiny. And you have most likely a chance of fourth, a third, if you, you know, stay on that undefeated streak of kind of tying and winning a lot of those games too. So that would be a plus for next year. I'm very happy for what happened. How many times did you, when we were watching the game uh, at our new favorite spot, didn't I, didn't I, we were, we were talking about this and I said, imagine if we had this squad. Oh, cause we were talking about, oh, uh, what was it? Sacramento. And yeah. we're like, oh man, like, we lost two points there. Uh, you know, that could have put us, catapulted us even like uh, higher in the standings. And then, and then you were like, and then I was like, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, we could end up going even further back and look yeah. how many, 
you know, and it just because, you know, how many points this team would have probably gotten had we had this squad since the beginning. You know, that just shows how much potential this this team had. And while I'm not saying that Wilmer Cabrera is perfect, I, you know, everybody has their faults, but I think Wilmer proved me wrong. You know, I'm just speaking for myself, but Wilmer proved me wrong. And all of, most of the doubts that I had on him as a sporting director, as a head coach, he proved that it, that he, I, he knows what he's doing and what he doesn't, he's willing because he just said it right now. What I don't know, I am willing to bring in people that know how to do the things that I don't know so I can learn from them. You know, we talked about many times about how Wilmer Cabrera could be, you know, someone that, that Eric come up with thinking that he's arrogant, you know, that he thinks that whatever he says was, you know, is the truth and, you know, and all of that, you know, it's, it, it's in these moments where you, you realize you, you see the, the true humanity, at least, at least that's what he portrayed. He, like he came off as, you know, something, a lot of times you can tell when they're just faking or when they're just lying to you, or they're just saying like, it's from the teeth outside. But this was a very, you know, intimate moment for him, you know, saying, saying all of that, thinking, uh ownership and uh and his and his higher ups for supporting supporting the team uh but, but enough uh talking about the things off, off the pitch but you know off the pitch really on the pitch really there's pretty much it was just a domination by rgv i, I, I we want to summarize it that's basically what it was for most for most of the game it, it, it was dominated by rio grande valley they had the, the more the, the opportunities Obviously, an early red card um, caused by Frank Lopez obviously helps out a lot. That's not that's not RGV that's not RGV's fault um, because Monterey put themselves in in the situation where. But at the end of the day, it, it's one of those things where that center back had to do it yep. because it was either that, like Frank Lopez, said, it was either that or Frank was going to be one on one versus the keeper. And he was one on one versus the keeper for most of the night too. Sometimes, especially throughout those three to five minutes, for the first time, he had a couple of opportunities before that penalty too. And the referee doing a good job of asserting the game, meaning he said basically with that red card, I'm not going to take that crap. I'm not going to take any of that. So giving that red card proved that it was going to be difficult for uh, Monterey Bay to be able to get into this. And credit. Monterey base keeper, because in the end, he guessed the right way and saved it. It's only for the rebound to come back and put RGV FC ahead. If RGV FC don't get that goal on the, off the rebound, what are we looking at? Nil-nil, possibly, or maybe, of course, RGV FC get a couple of goals, but it's one of those situations where it was just just that way. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I thought it was strange seeing Eric Pimentel take that penalty. Um, usually it, it's either been maybe like, you know, your strikers, Frank, maybe Jonas. Um, but I think at the end of the day, it shows also that everybody's focused and that, you know, any other, any other team, you're in a situation where you already know you clinched playoffs. Oh, right. We missed it. Ah, eh, whatever. A la otra, ¿verdad? But Juan Pablo Torres, you know, the way that like he, he sees the rebound. And he still went and get the ball, take the shot, right? Um, Jonathan Ricketts, I can't t talk enough about, uh, about him. Yep. You know, not only defensively, but offensively, you know, showing a lot of, uh, a lot of a great level. He's on a great level at this moment. Yes, unfortunately, he does make a mistake at the very end that costs us <laughs> a, a clean sheet. And I think the team... Now that they're in playoffs, they need to limit those, you know, lacks of concentrations. But I think at the end of the day, one of the things I noticed was, yeah, Jono kind of messed that one up, but um, or at eye level, right? You know, it looks like there was a miscommunication. I don't want to pull the blame 100% on, on Jonathan. Um, it was just a miscommunication between him and Tyler Derrick. You know, the intention was, ball's coming in through the air. You see your keeper come out like right next to you. But your intention is, okay, I'm going to either head it back to him or test it so that way he can grab it with his, uh, with his uh, hands. Uh, but there was a miscommunication there. Tyler Derrick wasn't expecting him to, you know, chest it down. 
and it was just a uh, uh, just a ball that was left there for for easy pickings. Uh, in the end, Tyler Derrick, you see you see him say, "My bad, my bad." It was my bad. You know, that's a, that's a leader. You know, the, uh, where he's willing to kind of take the blame. You know, away from the rookie and and, and him being an experienced person. You know, maybe I could have done something better. You know, so. I, I, I really, really, really res respect that from him. I definitely do. It, it, I mean, I talked about it last week, how and even the week before, how much of a leader he is and how much this team definitely deserves this man and how he's he's grown as, as a person, watching him all of his career, basically, from when he was homegrown at Houston Dynamo to where he's at now. He had some blunders in his career, for sure, like worse off the field. But we're talking about on the field and how much, I mean, it, it goes back to something that I remembered so well. You might not like this, Edson, but it, it's from Sean Ringers. And he said something back the first time when RGVSC ended up getting it. I remember this. He said, this man is such a leader because we had two great keepers before we got Tyler Derrick. But him being able to get him and him saying, how much of a leader he when he sees somebody messing up he's going to let them know to get back you know on track and, and stuff like that i remember it was something along the, the lines of that but it was so true and then me kind of thinking oh yeah he kind of did that with houston and then all of a sudden he comes over here and he, this is, yes was when rgvsc weren't great because they were still with houston dynamo but it showed yeah. he led so much as a team leader and that's what you need and we have these veterans. Think about this. If we did not have the veterans, this team's not going. Just take a look at the past couple of years that RGV was with the Houston Dynamo, dude. It was a complete shit show because we didn't have experienced players. We All we had were young players right out of college. I mean, they did the best that they could, but at the end of the day, the results speak for themselves. 2018, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, never even had an opportunity to make it to the playoffs. And now look at us. We're independent from the Houston Dynamo, two straight seasons in uh, in the playoffs. Yeah. At the end of the day, despite maybe a lot of people saying that it was going to be a bad idea, I guess it just proved itself that it, it was a good idea that everybody went kind of went their own separate ways. We're all ha we're all happy. Well, um, right now the Houston Dynamo ain't that ain't that happy, but I share that I share that 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 se that sentiment with y'all. I'm not trying to. Uh, make fun of, of Houston Dynamo. You guys know I'm still a Houston Dynamo fan, so it still hurts seeing the the team not make it to the playoffs for another year. But uh, it just proves it just proved us right. How many years we were like, we need to get out of the Houston Dynamo. We need to get out of the Houston Dynamo. Dynamo fans called us crazy. Called us. Uh, they even called us. Uh, uh, they even said that that we were not grateful. <laughs> that we were not grateful to the Houston Dynamo for, you know, for. Because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have exist, which is utter BS. But anyway, anyway, we're going on a, on a, on a huge ramble. Uh, let's finish this off. Jacob, man of the match. Man of the match. Um, uh, Ringo. I, I guess, I mean, he, he comes out there and... No, I take that back, actually. Frank, Frank Lopez gets back on, on the field and he, he, was, he showed up. He scores some goals. I mean, again... He, drawing the penalty changes this match because without that red card yes rgbfc probably still win but it's not as dominating as we saw tonight i agree with you on that i uh, for me frank lopez is the man is the man of the match um kind of went, went against him and rgb have been playing before you know uh, with uh pinson and and fieldberg a little bit freer uh not necessarily having like a a true number nine I wasn't. I, I didn't. I didn't know what, how the team was going to play now with the number nine. Uh, I guess we. I guess we were still kind of, um, kind of burnt about seeing Adolfo Hernandez and Frank Caviria as the number nine. But with Frankie the Tank, the team played really, really well. Um, they were able to exploit Monterey Bay's weaknesses, and Frank was able to capitalize with uh, with uh, the creation of the first goal. And of course, his own goal, the third, the third one, no, the second one, um, being uh, by Frank Lopez. So yeah, I agree with you. Frank uh, Frank Lopez 
man of the, man of the match. But Jacob, give us your final thoughts because I need to go change my shirt. Yeah. Um. F final thoughts. What, what a night. Uh, so excited for RGFC to be back in the playoffs. Um. I mean, no, nothing more more to say really. It's just. Very, very happy. Um, yeah, well, let's go. Let's go. Let's go dancing. Definitely, man. So the upcoming opponent for the Toros is going to be Colorado Springs Switchbacks. Will be very difficult, but it's definitely. I think the team has shown it's not impossible. If we can replicate what the what, how they played here a couple of weeks ago, if we can replicate it over there in Colorado Springs. I think it will be it'll be a very entertaining match. I, I can I can assure you that. Uh, but guys, thank you all for uh, watching this. If you guys liked it, give it a like, share it with your friends, um, and um, let's celebrate tonight responsibly. And uh, the team will will be back uh, next uh, I guess to, tomorrow or, or or Monday, focused on what's uh, fo focused on what's ahead. Let's savor the moment and. Uh, Let's let's show them our love, you know, send send them our love and our support as they take on uh, this road match against Colorado Springs. But we'll see you all this uh, Wednesday on the next episode of the Down in the Valley podcast on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash down in the valley. Jacob, thank you so much for being here. We'll see you all next week.